I recently painted the inside of my new home, and in this video, I wanted to go over how I picked my paint colors. Today's sponsor is our good friends over at Mighty Boards that are making our favorite way to test out paint colors. A big part of picking paint colors is testing them out properly, and Mighty Boards are large, flexible, paintable boards that allow you to turn a tiny little paint swatch into a substantial rectangle of color. This will allow you to visualize the paint colors you're deciding between in a much more realistic fashion because you have much more surface area to work with. All you do is you get some Mighty Boards, get some paint, whether it's some of your friends' extra paint lying around in their basement, or more specifically, a tester pot at your local paint store. You put the paint on the Mighty Board and view it in the space. What's awesome is the fact that they are also resistant to warping and bending, which means they're going to lie flat against whatever surface you put it on. And that means no distracting shadows which could skew your perception of the color. We love Mighty Boards and we're sure you will too. I'll leave their information down below if you wanna check them out. So there are a number of different methods that you can utilize when selecting paint colors for your home. Whether you're changing up a single room or painting every single room in the home like I did. I wanna go over a strategy that worked well for me and can hopefully help you if you're currently sitting in a place that's covered in white paint or something really gross that you just wanna paint over. No disrespect to anyone that is obsessed with white neutral walls. I know you're out there. <laughs> in fact, there's a lot of you. The first color we decided on, and yes, it was not just me, but a group effort with myself and my now wife. And that was the main color. Your main color in your color palette is that one paint color that takes up a majority of your wall space. Think hallway color, or maybe family room, living room color. I assume off the bat that this paint color is gonna go everywhere to start with. It probably won't, but that's just how I think of it. Chances are I will be adding other paint colors as we go on, but just to begin, we have this one paint color as the foundation. So the question is, how did we land on this color that we ended up picking? We knew we had a general design style in mind first, one that felt a bit transitional with some straight lines and all that, a bit of a huga comfort mixed in with some Japandi because we both love Japan and also the aspects of the design style itself. So immediately we're thinking of some form of light gray, but with the added warm comfort of huga. I knew I wanted it to be warmer. And also we wanted our main area to feel really airy and buoyant because there's a lot of light coming in through the windows and I wanted that light to reflect off of some lighter walls. So we knew we wanted something light, so light and warm. Pretty sure you know where I'm going here. It's off white. The floors are also a big point of consideration because you don't necessarily want them to completely blend into your walls. There has to be some sort of relationship and coordination, but you still want some level of contrast. I'm fine with a large amount of it because my gut was telling me I wanted to go with an off-white on the walls and I had floors that were a bit darker, so off-white for the walls. So at this point I'm thinking, great, I've uh, narrowed things down to the most crowded color type that exists. How am I going to simplify things for myself? Because I'm a believer that if you can simplify, you just better do it, because why complicate your life? I'll tell you how I did it. When I came for my final visitation before closing day, I literally brought some Mighty Boards that were painted with some of the paint colors that I had lying around at the condo. I had Simply White, which I used on the trim. I also have Plaster of Paris, which was my previous main color. And then there was Dove Wing that I used in my bathroom. As much as we loved Plaster of Paris in the last place, I also had the luxury of having floor to ceiling windows in my 14 foot ceiling loft that really brighten the place up. Dove Wing is the slightly lighter color and it also feels a little more gray leaning which really seemed to coordinate nicely with the pre-existing gray kitchen cabinets which we weren't going to change, at least for now. And that was it. Of those three paint colors that I tested, Dove Wing really did the job for us. To some people, this may seem like an overly simplified way of picking colors, but why does it need to be complicated? We obviously liked the color enough to use it in our old place, and our tastes haven't drastically changed in a year since we used it, so we gave it a shot and honestly could not be happier with it. So remember how I said, assume your main color is going everywhere and then change things up where you feel compelled to? 
Well, Dove Wang ended up carrying through my hallways, the open living dining area, the kitchen, and that was because they were all sort of connected to one another. Keep that flow consistent. We even carried the color into the powder room. And this wasn't my original plan to be honest, because normally I love to experiment with paint colors in the powder room specifically, because it's its own sectioned off zone that can be a showstopper for your guests. But the long and short of it was, we're not necessarily sure what we're going to do there yet, so we figured we'd keep it nice and neutral in the meantime. This gives the whole first floor a real sense of flow that is simple and concise, very streamlined. I really do enjoy light colors or darker off-whites for those main areas because they'll normally contrast with most flooring, and they're also going to have enough depth where if you use white trim like I did, the woodwork will really pop off of it as well. Yes, dark colors, they can technically make a space appear larger, but lighter colors will naturally brighten the space, which was even more important to me. Before we head upstairs to the more interesting color choices, we gotta do a tiny bit of housekeeping and talk about the laundry color. Purely a practical choice here, I just went with Plaster of Paris for two reasons. I had an extra gallon from my old place, sorry not sorry, and I also wanted something that was just a bit darker than the main color because I wash my brushes and rollers in the laundry room and I wanna make sure I can scrub those walls. That extra bit of color can hide imperfections a tiny bit better. So that was kind of my mindset there. How I came to select my upstairs bathroom colors was not all that different from how I picked my main color. While Dove Wang has a little more subtle warmth, which is more to keep my home feeling cozy and maybe even a little vibrant, and then I like to lean towards cooler colors for bathrooms typically because they tend to be more calming and soothing. At the same time, I didn't want anything that was overly bold and punchy, so I landed on paper white because it really fits into that light neutral category that I was going with, but it's definitely cooler for light neutral that can sometimes show a tiny blue or cool green undertone, which suits me just fine. Finally, the bedrooms. They were chosen mainly out of inspiration from the many homes I get to see, both in person and online, purely based on the fact that I'm a bit of an interior decorating junkie and I just binge and watch a ton of YouTube on the subject matter. Maybe some of you watching can relate, right? For the office color, we just wanted to pick a color that represents what I'm very into right now, which makes sense because it's an area that I will be spending a lot of time in, and it is the greenage color November rain. The primary bedroom, which is where I'm in right now, it's quite messy, there's still a lot of boxes around, which is why I'm not really giving you the full house tour yet. But it's the place where I'll be sleeping at night, so it had to be dark. Both my wife and I, ooh, feels weird calling on my wife. Both my wife and I love a dark room to fall asleep in, so we were tossing a few ideas around until we stumbled upon a pharaoh and ball color that I talked about in a video called Inchira Blue. Some of the renderings on the Pharaoh and Ball website were absolutely beautiful, where they combine this deep dark blue and this really pale kind of blush color, and we knew we wanted to replicate that to some degree. We landed on a color called Nocturnal Gray by Benjamin Moore because I just wanted to use Aura for such a dark color. It's just a product that I'm used to and I really enjoy. And we love that pink color so much that we ended up using it as the wall color for our guest room. I really like incorporating this sort of yin-yang relationship between rooms sometimes, where the primary color in one room becomes the accent in another and vice versa. So my guest room ended up being first light with some deep dark teal throw pillows, and it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone initially, but ever since I reviewed First Light when it was crowned color of the year back in 2020, I really loved how people were utilizing the color in very interesting ways. It's pretty much being seen as an alternative to beige, but that was years ago. So here's a more up-to-date video on the paint color where I go over some coordinating colors that work with it as well, loosely based on what we ended up doing in that room. 